Slavery, good evening, Zambia. Good evening, Africa and Womo. Welcome to this uh, State of the Nation right here on KBN TV from Zambia's capital city. Lusaka with me, Innocent Peer. You can simply call me IP. The program is on DSTV channel 279, GoTV channel 27, and also Topsa Decoder channel 102. You can follow the program on our social media platform. Now, he is a Zambian uh, politician born in 1959. Is a journalist by profession and also a lawyer at the same time. Now leading a political party called the Socialist Party, according to him, he believes in justice and equity for all Zambians. In the space of uh, two weeks, he has been arrested two times by the Zambia police on various matters relating to classified information. But again, he has been to the court two times whose case has not taken place up to this moment while we are. Let's find out what could have happened and why some of these cases have not taken place from the time he was arrested, among other issues that have happened in our Republic of Zambia. Good evening once again. Doc, good evening and welcome to the program. Good evening. Thank you very much for welcoming me. Thank you so much. He is uh, Dr. Fred, member, leader of the Socialist Party in Zambia. How was your evening today? I know that you had a busy day. Uh, you were at um, the court and later on your matter failed to take place, which led you to make another move to go and visit uh, the headquarters, possibly to hunt for an arresting officer. Give us the updates. I think the latest thing is that this afternoon, mm. uh, Sean Tembo was arrested. His whereabouts, we don't know. The lawyers were told he's being taken to Kawata from police headquarters. Uh, Junaris went to Kawata police station. He was not there. Up to now, we have been trying to find out where he is, we don't know. So we hope by morning, his relatives, his lawyers and others should know. It's sad that arrests should be made secretly. Why should the detention of somebody, the, the, the place of detention of somebody be a secret? As if it's a treason one has committed. When it's just a mere misdemeanor. There, last week again, Edith Nawako was arrested. I was arrested. Mm. All these are politicians. They are leading political parties. It doesn't look good. We have gone to court twice. Mm. The matters on which we were arrested are not in court. No record has been taken to court. There are so much haste in arresting us. There are so much fanfare in arresting us. Where arrest us if they are not ready to prosecute us? This, in arresting you and charging you, they are saying they have investigated and have come to the conclusion that you have committed this crime. But then they can't take you to court. They are not ready. What does it mean? How should we interpret that? Mm. What should be our conclusions? What is your conclusion? Well, it doesn't show seriousness. It stinks of malice, vindictiveness, repression, intolerance. We have been telling them the police should not be a tool for doing politics. They shouldn't use the police to deal with the political opponents. Political opponents should be dealt with politically. The contest is a political contest. And let's deal with the issues politically. Let's resolve the differences through discourse, through debate, through discourse. The use of the police won't work. The police is there to deal with the crime. Politics is not a crime. To engage in politics is not a crime. 
is something that is guaranteed by the constitution and the other laws. Mm. Are you insinuating, Doc, that uh, the police in this case is being abused or is being used to maybe disadvantage the political opponents, people like you, among others, based on the example you've given? I don't know if the disadvantage is the right word, mm. but definitely the police is being used to repress political opponents. How many people have they arrested? How many political persons have they arrested? How many have they prosecuted to the end? To date? They transported Mr. Tayari from here to Rukuru. Brought him, he had to find his way back. Do you hear anything about that matter? They transported him at night. At such a huge cost. Somebody was transported to Solwezi. I don't know if it's Mr. Nakachinda. What have you heard of that matter? Somebody was transported to Chinsari at night, got acquitted, a political opponent. Another was put in prison for one year and fairly on murder charges. The day before the judgment or the day of judgment, they enter a nolle, run away from giving her the judgment she deserved. What does one make of all this? But look at the fanfare that accompanies all these arrests. Look at the drama the number of police officers that are mobilized. And it's not only, you know, the arrest, but also the curtailment of other liberties. Freedom of assembly. Last Saturday we saw how the PF were denied the opportunity to hold a political rally in Zingalume. The excuse was the police doesn't have enough manpower. But look at the manpower that was mobilized. The number of automobiles that was mobilized to simply ensure that the PF does not hold a rally. Mm. That was more than what was required for the PF to hold a rally peacefully. Mm. We, we shall get to the PF and its affairs later on, Doc. But uh, based on the, you know, the concerns you've just raised on this particular matter, where you've tabulated or highlighted the number of uh, politicians who have been arrested in the space of uh, two years uh, or maybe uh, one year plus uh, of the UPND government. Um, I want to borrow the belief that uh, most of you, the lawyers or the legal minds have, where you are telling us to say no matter how much or how long the matter can be delayed, the wheels of justice will always move. So it doesn't matter to what pace the wheels are moving at, but when somebody commits a crime or an offense, you will be caught up one day. So can we say, because uh, some of these cases have not seen, you know, um, any, you know, room in the courts at the moment, or maybe from the time they were arrested, can we insinuate, can you speculate that nothing's going on, or these were politically, uh, possibly uh, charged cases? Your conclusion is as good as mine. What is my conclusion? I didn't con conclude anything. I asked you a question, Doc. What did you make of it? I don't have an answer. You can share with me. No, but it's, it's something that you can see as well. Mm. It's not only for us politicians, you know, to give our opinions on these things. You journalists also should come to your own conclusions. Mm. Mm. It doesn't mean, you know, if you are interviewing me, you cannot have an opinion. This is not necessarily an interview, it's a discourse mm. between a political person and a journalist. What did you think of it? Let's start to discuss things. You shouldn't just be asking questions. You should also be answering questions. Especially uh, questions. I don't drop that. Or especially uh, questions you, you, that you are also obvious. a journalist at the same time, but uh, you can ask question, uh, questions. Yeah, but I think at this particular moment, uh, 
I will ask questions as you're also responding to my question. Yeah, but what does it mean if you initiate mm. criminal proceedings against an individual by starting to arrest and charge them, and then it ends there? You do not move beyond that. These are individuals you have detained for a day or two. You have denied police bond. You have locked up in cells. You don't take them to court. Or they appear once and you disappear. You don't prosecute your matter to the end. What does it mean? After humiliating them, after making so much noise, after transporting them some 600 kilometers, you abandon the matter. What does it mean? And these are matters you are saying you investigated and came to a conclusion that a crime has been committed. Why not pursue them? Some of them, the simple explanation is that they are frivolous charges, mm. which when they go to the National Prosecution Authority, the professionals there find, it, uh, find them frivolous and unprosecutable. Let's say in your case, let's talk about in your case, of course, not discussing the issues before the courts, but uh, you've not, you know, se stepped into the uh, courts from the time you were, you know, uh, transferred from the police uh, wings now to the judiciary. The case has been postponed so about two times now. What is the main reason? Today you went to um, hunt for the arresting officer. What have you been taught at Force Headquarters? To your Those lawyer? who are supposed to prosecute us have not taken even any record to court. They gave us the date to go to court, or dates to go to court. The dates come, we go to court, there's no record. The court says we don't know anything, there's no record here. You have to go back to the police. When you get back to the police, they extend the bond. You saw what happened when I was being arrested. You saw the fanfare. You saw the drama. You saw the sense of urgency that was there. They could not even leave me. They had to detain me. But today they are not in a hurry to go to court. They are not ready to take even a record to court. How should I interpret that? As a person who has been charged. Yes, I've got an opinion on it. But probably my opinion may not matter that much. I can tell you truthfully, the charges that have been brought against me cannot stand in a fair court of law. Mm. They can't stand. I'm not saying so because I'm involved. Right. But even if they were for another person, I would say the same. They are not different from the charges we used to see against Mr. Hakainde and the others in the UPND. There were charges that could not stand in court. How many cases were concluded? And if concluded, were successful against the UPND, against Mr. Hakainde and other colleagues of his? Very few, if any. That system has continued. Mm. The UPND, Mr. Kainde, complained against those such type of charges. Mr. Kainde was locked up for months. On what we, as journalists at that time, denounced as trumped up prison charges. Eventually, he was released after spending so much time. On charges which everybody knew that there was no reason to prosecute him for. But they still detained him. He's not the first one. Mm. Dr. Kaunda was detained on Christmas Day, 1997. On a treason charges again, which Mr. Chiruba knew very well had no merit.
Dr. Kaunda was involved, was not involved in any treason actions. But still was locked up and released later. No charge. We have seen a lot of these things happen in the past. We thought with the change of government in 2021 this would end. They are still continuing. Mm. We don't know when they will end. How do you think could be the solution to all what you've, you've narrated? I mean, you've lived longer in this country, um, of course, from the media perspective or media business and uh, now in the political field. You've seen administrations or regime have come and go. They have left you. Um, we've covered some of them. And now you are inside the battle, the political battle. What do you think should be done for a country like Zambia to move away from this issue which you are, you know, purporting or alleging really and uh, where you are saying some politicians are being arrested on political grounds. But again, arrests of some former leaders, we have seen it happening, of course. Like the example you've given about Dr. the late Dr. Kaunda was arrested on a, a treason a, allegation. Those things have happened before to an extent where Dr. Kaunda was uh, declared homeless. He was called a foreigner in his own country after having ruled Zambia for 27 years. Are there good things that we should proudly continue? Mm. We should happily continue? We should accept it to live with? Are there things we can change? Mm. And we should change? Definitely, there is an abuse of the criminal justice system to fix political opponents. But we have seen in the past, and we are seeing in the present, mm. that such practices cannot work, do not achieve the desired results by those who perpetrate them. We have said that the exercise of power must be a constant practice of self-limitation and modesty. Power corrupts and sometimes it goes to the head and you start to think it's yours because you are called so and so, you are called president of the republic or head of state and everything, including the laws, are subordinate to you. You can command, and your will is done. Again, our advice is the exercise of power must be a constant practice of self-limitation and modesty. Mm. Nobody owns power. The only people who own power is the people themselves. A president doesn't have that much power. Look at how helpless they become when they move out of that office. Look at how vulnerable they become. You start to wonder, is this the man who people thought was omnipotent, was so powerful? Look at how power ends. And sometimes abruptly so. I think people sometimes torture themselves so much with what they don't have, the power they don't have, and they think they have it. What power does Mr. Kainde really have? What power did Mr. Rungu really have? Or anybody else before them? Look at how Mr. Rungu today is looking. Look at how vulnerable he is. Look at how vulnerable Mr. Rupia was. After leaving office, Pia Banda. Look at how vulnerable KK was after leaving power. Look at how vulnerable Mr. Chuluva was. Look at the lives they lived after that, mm. after losing power. But look at their behavior when they were in power. At least some of them. Should the government really, or the system, let me not say the government, but the system 
should not stop arresting suspects if you suspect something that maybe uh, comrade Dr. Fred Membe has committed a crime there. Should it stop arresting such kind of individuals? Those who have committed the crimes mm. must be arrested and be prosecuted. And it doesn't matter who it is. If I commit a crime, I should be arrested and be prosecuted. But that should be done in a fair and just manner. Mm. There must be reasonable grounds that have committed a crime. Not where everybody, even the, the dullest person, can see that there's no crime that has been committed. It didn't need one to be a lawyer to see that Mr. Kainde Hichirema had not committed the treason that he was charged with. You didn't need to be a lawyer. It was clear to everybody. The most that it could have been is a traffic offense. But even a traffic offense, he was not the one driving. The traffic offense is committed by the one on the steering wheel. But there he was. He spent months and he fared in prison. Mistreated. We don't want that to happen to anybody. It happened, and when it happened, we opposed it. Mm. We are still opposed to it today, and we are opposed to such practices tomorrow. How has been your spirit, Dr. Fred Membe, from the time you were arrested? And uh, of course, um, with all the you know detention that you've uh, gone through, how has been your mental stability? How has been your uh, physical uh, stability? Do you feel shaken or intimidated up to this point? First, I'm not the only one to be arrested. I've told you how many people have been arrested. And also, it's not the first time the system has been used against me. It's not the first time I've been abused. In short, I'm saying it's not the first time I've been arrested. Mm. So being arrested cannot break me. If anybody thinks you know they can break me by arresting me, they are wasting their time. The only way to break me is to kill me. If somebody kills me, then they have broken me because I'm not able to resist. Sales cannot break me. Prison cannot break me. I have been to prison without a conviction. Without even a charge before any court of law. So being arrested, being detained cannot break me. I'm still the same person I was before I was arrested. I'm still doing the same work I was doing before I was arrested. I've not stopped anything. And I won't stop. You, you have been described as a, a person that is more of an alarmist in this country due to the articles that you write sometimes. And I'm sure it is uh, some of the articles that have landed you in trouble today um, where the system or the, those in government are saying Dr. Fred Membe will one day land this country into problem. Are you an alarmist? Check the facts. Mm. Check the facts. Show me one article I've published that is not based on facts. Or even if it's an opinion that is not anchored on facts. Show me one. So let's not generalize because I don't know what you're talking about. You're generalizing. Tell me what you're talking about. Mm. Then I'm able to address what you're talking about. Of course, one of the articles, of course, I wouldn't want us to go dive much into the court issues, but the article that 
uh, made you get arrested in the first place you were arrested is uh, based on uh, disclosing um, certain secret information, which is called a classified classified information. You saw it? You saw the classified information? Yes, I read it. I have not seen the classified documents you are talking about. I just read your article. So what makes you feel it was the classified information and this, it was alarmist? Yeah, so basically for me, I'm not saying it was the same article that really landed you in trouble, but people are saying that could be one of them. Which people? The, of course, the political commentators, those who are on the ruling you, side. You were a journalist. Mm. You were a journalist. Mm. You read the charges against me. So let's talk about facts, because they are there. Mm. There are three, there are two or so articles I published that on which have been charged. Let's look at them. What is alarmist? Or what are the state secrets that were published? Mm. You are saying I published state, secret, state secrets. What did I publish? Really, there isn't um, any, not from the police, uh, there wasn't any disclosure of which article in particular, but they are saying you published a classified information. What? And that's why the people from the UPND, I think uh, Max Moore is one of the people that, of course, has come so ballistic that we know Dr. Fred Membe uh, is an alarmist. No, Look don't, don't generalize. I can't talk about the generalities, innocent. Mm. If you want me to answer to something, put it on the table so that we discuss facts. I can't talk about things. You are, talk, you are not saying what you wanted to say. Mm. So, but you want me to comment on what I don't know, what you are saying, what you are talking about. Tell me there's this that you published. It was alarmist. Mm. Then okay. I will be able to, to show you. Fantastic. So basically it's just a, a general concern coming from your uh, political uh, let's, opponents. Let's deal so I'll leave with the there. facts. Like I mentioned, I will leave I can't there. answer to rumors, to generalities. I answer to facts. Mm. Put the issue on the table, I'll answer to it. Fantastic. I, I'm going to leave it there because if yeah, I go further, I mean, I will be discussing the matter which is already in court and in the process that might be cited. So why do you want to, me to answer to something that you are not ready to talk about yourself, mm. but you want so, me to talk so, about so it? So basically, I wanted you to comment on the general criticism coming from the UPND. I can't uh, talk about no. what I don't know. Put there's this issue, there's this issue, there's this issue, there's this issue. Mm. Even if there are 100 issues, I'll address each one of them. Fantastic. So comrade, friend, member, we'll leave it there, and then we move on from there. Uh, let, let's look at um, the aspect of uh, where we are as a country, uh, more especially in the last two years of the UPND government. How do you rate the New Dawn government in its performance, specifically under the economic uh, liberation or transformation? What has taken place so far? I've said before that my judgment of what the UPND has accomplished or not accomplished does not matter much. What the UPND says it has accomplished does not matter much. What matters much is what the people feel the UPND has accomplished or has not accomplished. On the basis of the changes that have taken place in their lives. If people are eating well today, They are eating three meals a day. When they used to eat one or two meals a day, they will be happy. If people have jobs today, which they did not have before, their income has increased, they will be happy. If people can go to sleep on full stomachs, and in peace. It doesn't matter what I say mm. or what the UPND says. What matters is what the people are feeling. What is the situation of our people today? The reality is the prices of meal meal have gone up. That's a fact. Mm. 
is not in dispute. If the people are happy with that, even if I criticize those prices, I'm against the high prices of meal meal. It has no consequence. The prices of many things, of cooking oil, sugar, salt, eggs, meat, fish, chicken, have gone up. If the people are happy with that, mm. it doesn't matter what I say. The prices of fuel have gone up from what they were before the UPND came into power. If people are happy with that, it doesn't matter what I say. The prices of fertilizers have gone up. They are higher than what they were before the UPND came into power. Could you also mention some of the achievements uh, when you talk about uh, the, the economy? Uh, I thought you would go further and maybe appreciate the UPND for uh, restructuring I, I, the debt. I've, I've now. told you it's not me to say what they have achieved or not what they have achieved. Yeah, I'm just they have to told bring you in they because are to, they are telling you are categorizing me. the high cost of living, most purely milli meal. So no, I said, no, why can't you also go no, further and look at the positives? No, tell me what has gone down. I'm just telling you what affects people's lives. Mm. If these things, I'm, I'm telling you that if these things don't affect people's lives, it doesn't matter what I say about them. It is a fact that the prices of meal meal have gone up. Tell me if I'm wrong. Is it a fact or is not a fact that prices of meal meal have gone up? Tell me. I'm not criticizing or I'm not criticizing or praising anybody. I'm just stating facts. I'm not here to praise or simply to criticize. I'm here to deal with the facts. Is it a fact? I'm asking you. Is it a fact that the price of milk has gone up? It's, it's is a one known fact because uh, even the government has admitted. President Agen Dishlema was in Mandeba a few days ago and he did mention that we are aware that the cost of uh, millennial has gone higher, but are people happy, is being done. Are people happy with it? Mm. If people are happy with it, it's fine. I have no issue. If that deserves the praise, give it to the UPND, because the people are happy. Is it a fact that the prices of fuel have gone up? I think it is. If it's something that the, PA, the UPND deserves the praise for, give it to them. Say it loud. Go on the highest mountain and say it. Give it to them. If that's what they want to hear, and if that's what the people want. Mm. Do people have the jobs they need? If they have them, praise the glorious leadership of Mr. Akainde Hichirema. Give it to them. We can praise them. Mm. Someone uh, tweeted a praise for Mr. Akainde for sinking a boho yesterday. Praise him. He sank a boho in Mandev. Cheer for him. Barry has fixed it. If that's what they wanted to hear, we have no problems. If you want us to cheer them for the high prices of Miu Miu, we will cheer them. Mm. We will praise them. We'll sing hallelujah for them. Let's, let, let, let's take a breather for a moment, uh, uh, comrade Dr. Fred Member. If you were in power today, uh, or you were, if you were in the shoes of uh, President Aga and Ishtema in a period of two years, how were you going to resolve these issues? 
yes. more especially the millimill issue which has gone up the, uh, the fuel issue which has gone up how are you going to handle these issues you used to hear of body will fix it mm. have you ever heard anybody say member will fix it hmm? Have you ever heard of, I'm asking you, have you ever heard where people say member of And then what are you coming to do? No, I'm asking you, have you heard, answer me. Mm. I mean, you, uh, that, I'm it, asking you, have the, you the, ever the, heard anybody say member of it? Mm. There isn't that, uh, uh, you know, hashtag or that song no, coming from what, your members. What, Comrade, but comrade issue here, why don't you just answer a, why, don't, why not you just answer a simple question in a simple way? Mm. I've asked you, have you ever heard anybody say member will fix it? Mm. Say, have the never. hashtag is not there. It's thank you. Yeah, you could have be using you a ever, different hashtag. Have you, ever, have you ever heard of somebody say Barry will fix it? Mm. I'm afraid have you ever uh, heard of that? Yeah, so you, could, you are using a different mode of what? communicating there's a, to the there's people. A, a, you want there's the audience a, there's to vote a, for you. There's a, and there's once a reason they vote for you, I'm you are going to change people's lives. Um, it's almost it's not the same. about it's not about me. Mm. That's where the difference is. Right. Mr. Kainde and these people believe he will fix things. Mm. He's a MacGyver. He's a Samson. He's a genius. Us, we don't believe in a single genius. I'm not a MacGyver. I'm not a Samson. I'm not a Messiah. We have had only one Messiah who we are waiting for his second coming. This man sitting before you here is not a Messiah. What is Muchibe, that to do Muchibe, Muchibe, this man Muchibe, who is sitting before Muchibe, me today? Muchibe, Muchibe, mba, Muchibe, 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 Vantu. Umuno mo tao salenda. On my own, there's nothing, 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 nothing I can do. I'm not a genius. And we're not looking for a genius. A single genius. We're looking for a collective genius. Leaders lead. The people govern. What the people can't do for themselves, nobody will do it for them. No matter what the promises. So it's not about me. It's about what the people of this country will do for themselves. Right. And that's why in our campaigns we are saying people should vote for themselves. We were saying so, not in a rhetoric sense. We were saying so because the people must govern. And the people must govern. The leaders must lead. Mm. There are problems. If a leader's lead and govern at the same time, there are problems. Mm. Qu quickly, I, I want your comment, uh, Comrade uh, Dr. Fred Membe, in regards to, of course, we have seen uh, President Agandichnema making a lot of strides um, in terms of, uh, you know, the international trips that he has, you know, undertaken in the last two years he has been in power. Uh, he has coined himself as the chief marketing officer of uh, Zambia. At the same time, again, recently we did see President Agandichnema uh, being part of uh, the BRICS summit in, in South Africa, you know, against, you know, the critics that uh, most of you, and you in particular, was uh, at some point described uh, President Agenda Ishlema as more like uh, a person who is siding with the West. But he was in, in, a, in a summit for the, the BRICS. What does it mean in your case? Uh, tell me, what did he do at the BRICS summit? What did he say? Mm. Of course, he delivered, he delivered a speech. What was the speech about? He was, uh, I mean, he, he, he talked mm. much about, uh, yeah, he talked no. much, he gave much an emphasis on the need for 
African countries to ensure that we begin to, first of all, unity, something that he uh, much talked about it, and also he talked about uh, the uh, trade, free continental uh, uh, trade area that needs to be, you know, fulfilled as quick as possible. That was what? two minutes, I mean, six minutes video. What were the bricks about? Hmm. What were the bricks about? What was the BRICS about? You tell me. You are here. No. Mm. You are asking me. You are talking about, you are explaining here. Mm. You journalists have a duty to talk about things you understand. Mm. Don't interview people on the things you don't understand. Mm. Do your homework. What was the BRICS about? You are saying you, he went there, this, mm. that, that. You are talking about it in a very glorifying manner. Yeah. So... Tell me, what was the BRICS that Mr. Kainde went to attend about? And what was, the country, what was his contribution to that meeting? So that I'm able to respond to you. Mm. Mm? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm asking you, tell me. Then I can respond to what you're talking about. What were the BRICS about? You are the one who's talking about the BRICS. What was the BRICS about? What were they discussing at the BRICS? And what was Mr. Kainde's contribution to that discussion at the BRICS? I mean, you are here. Yes. You can go ahead. But no. really is to give you a question and uh, you, you proceed on your own. No, you said that you said special no, on our president at the BRICS. Uh, you said a lot of things about about the BRICS and how mm. he, he was talking about this and that. Mm. Look, I can go to a meeting to discuss journalism. I get to that meeting, I start talking about soccer. About how Arsenal is such a good team, or Manchester United is such a good team, or Barcelona. Mm. But that meeting is discussing journalism. I can do that. Is that my contribution to the, to the journalism discourse? Yes, I can say all the nice things about Manchester United. Mm about soccer and correct things. But the meeting has, has been called to discuss journalism. The quality of reporting, the quality of editing, mm. the ethics of journalism. But me, I go and talk about how Messi is such a good player, how Ronaldo was such a good player, how Patson Daka is doing well and about his transfers. Mm. Good things and correct things. Am I making a contribution to the discourse on journalism? And I should be praised for talking about soccer. Mm. Yeah. So tell me what they discussed at the BRICS. All right. Yes, tell me, innocent. Tell me. Wow. Uh, really, I, I, I'm, for me, I'll leave it to you. If you're not comfortable, really, then we can leave it there. No, um, but if you want to ask, you know, the way you ask the question. Yes. The way you ask the question mm. deserves me to answer you in that way. If you asked me, there was a BRICS in South Africa, the BRICS meeting, and our president attended. Mm. What is your view on the BRICS? Why do you think African countries should have attended, including Zambia and so on? I would, like have, ans I would have answered you. Right. But you wanted me to talk about Mr. Kainde's contribution to that meeting. Because you started with him, this and that, this and that, unity, this and that, mm. continental trade, this and that. So I don't understand what you're talking about. I have my understanding of the BRICS meeting, and that's what, what I'm What asking. is your understanding in that meeting? About what? About the uh, BRICS uh, summit and Zambia's participation to that. If you ask that way, I can answer you. Mm. 
For some time now, the world has been dominated by the G7, which used to be the G8 when Russia was included. There is a feeling that that G8 order, or the current economic order, is benefiting the G8. It's not benefiting most of the world. The current economic order that emerged after the Second World War is not benefiting everybody. Mm. It's benefiting those in the G7 and if any, very few more. Brazil, South Africa, India, China, and they came together to try and create another order. Mm. And other parts of the world, many other countries are seeing hope for a new world economic order. And they are trooping, they are flocking to the BRICS to try and join, to create an alternative world economic order that will benefit them. The world has been producing a lot of goods. Technology has improved considerably since 1945. Production has increased. But amidst this increased production, poverty is also increasing in the world. Inequality is also increasing in the world. Unemployment is also increasing in the world. The destruction of the environment, of this planet on which we depend, is also increasing. Mm. And the current world economic order doesn't seem to have answers to these problems. They go to Davos every year in winter to discuss these things, but not to seek solutions outside the current order, but to find solutions within the current order. Mm. And they are failing to do so because they are trying to square a cycle. To address these issues, a new world economic order is needed. That is more fair, that is more just, that is more humane. Mm. And that promotes peace and cooperation among nations in a manner that the current order doesn't. Those were the principal things being discussed in Johannesburg. They were the center of the speeches that were delivered there mm. by President Ramaphosa, President, Prime Minister Modi, President Xi Jinping, President Rula, and the others who were invited to speak or to participate in that discourse. We are seeking a better world mm. because there is a general belief arising in the world that this planet, this world will not be good for any of us if it's not good for all of us. More and more nations are seeking win-win cooperation with others, win-win engagements with others. where if we get into a deal between a nation A and nation B, both nation A lives happy smiling and nation B lives happy smiling. Mm. Not where nation A or nation B feels never to fear. Never to live in a supermarket. Never to live in a supermarket. But it's gone. Is, that, is such a world possible? It is possible. Mm. But we have to struggle for it. It won't just come on its own. 
because those who are benefiting from the current economic order will not want to relinquish their privileges their advantages they don't want to give them up they will spread their armies all over the world to defend their their, their, their advantages to defend their benefits from the current order but indeed humanity can organize mm. its life in a more rational way and not in this in this irrational manner and in the case of zambia let's talk about the case of zambia that of course uh, participated how do we intend to uh, to benefit from uh, the brics uh, uh, meeting that we attended it is something that we have to assess the zambian government and the zambian people the zambian business people the zambian workers the zambian farmers need to pay attention to what is going on in the world need to assess all the initiatives that are being taken and decide whether to be part of them or not on the basis of what they get from it mm. pay attention to what the brics are doing assess what is being done for yourself come to your own conclusions as a people and take the decision that best benefits you if it benefits us to join the brics let's do so mm. if it doesn't benefit us let's not do so and what is your recommendation should we join my recommendation is that we should join it's beneficial right mm. okay let me take it to other issues of but course, the benefits are not, but the benefits are not automatic like in anything else the benefits are not automatic right we have to work for them we have to struggle for them nobody will give us a beneficial world on a silver platter we have to struggle for that ourselves again as i said what we can't do for ourselves nobody will do it for us mm. if we go to the brics is to work for our own benefits as well and ensure that we establish a world economic order based on cooperation and one and win win engagement in managing our time dr fred member let's look at um, uh, what happened uh, in zimbabwe Uh, just a few days ago we did um, you know witness the general election that was held on 23rd of uh, um, August and of course later on uh, last week we did uh, also you know we were informed that uh, president um, Nangagwa uh, was uh, declared winner of the elections whose Nelson Chamisa has disputed according to him he feels that uh, there was a lot of uh, you know a, a fraud in there that took place irregularities that took place What is your assessment of the Zim election? Right now there is a dispute in the United States. Mm. Mr. Donald Trump says the election that Mr. Biden won was a fraud. He denounced it. Mm. But others congratulated Mr. Biden. I think everybody congratulated Mr. Biden for winning the election. That's in America which prides itself to be or prides itself to be a leading democracy in the world. The champions of free and fair elections. It's not the first time. Mm. Elections have been disputed in America. There was a dispute uh some years back when uh, Mr. Bush and uh, who is the other one who was uh, the vice president of Mr. Clinton this environment uh, the one who is much more concerned with the, the climate change there was a dispute mm-hmm. We have also seen some disputes of elections in Europe where they have been denounced and so on. 
There were disputed elections in DRC. There were disputed elections in Angola. Some people were not happy with elections in Mozambique, and so on. We have had the election petitions in Zambia. Mm. We have had them before. The last elections we had, we had deaths. Congo was killed in the northwestern province. Polling stations were invaded. Some polling agents of other parties were chased in certain areas of our country. Sadiq was monitoring. The EU was here. We still congratulated the winners. At least I can say I did. And probably I was the first one to congratulate the winners amidst all those things. I don't expect the Zimbabwean elections to have no disputes. If one party to the Zimbabwean elections says they are not happy with the elections, does, make, does that make the election a fraud? In South Africa, the, election, the last elections were denounced by others. Hmm. Were the South African elections a fraud? They should be nullified. We shouldn't have congratulated the ANC for winning. I don't see much difference about what has happened in the Zimbabwean elections to what happened here, to what happened in Angola, to what happened in DRC, to what happened in Kenya, to what happened in Nigeria, and in many other places. Mm. The only difference I see is that there's some groups of people who appear to have double standards, who appear to be treating Zimbabwe differently. Mm. And I don't think it's fair. There are so many people that have passed those elections. Which ones are those groupings? You are suspecting that they've got a double standards stance. Definitely, the reports that have been that have come from the Sadiq group have and been EU. have been and EU mm. have been condemned by others, and I don't agree with them myself. Mm. Based on what is coming out of there, and based on what we have seen in other countries, they were here in the last elections. I think there's need to give Zimbabwe a chance that is given to others. Mm. Yes, they don't, well, these are countries that have sanctioned Zimbabwe. But Zimbabwe has been magnanimous enough to even invite representatives from countries that have sanctioned them. That for all these years have been seeking a regime change. We also know that some members of the Sadiq group belong to governments that are good friends with the groups that have been seeking who are those now? I mean members you are talking about. I'm talking about Zambia. Yeah, so who are those members that belong to the Sadiq and they belong to the government? I'm talking about Zambia. Zambia has got a representative there chosen by Mr. Kainde. Mm, who is that? Uh, Which representative? Is come, that? On, come on, innocent. I mean, Doc, you've told me to be specific. You, you don't, you you don't know specific. who Mr. Kainde put on the Sadiq group. Mm. Are you telling me you don't know? Personally, I may know, uh, but I'm for ask, the people, I'm asking the people of Zambia, you, I'm asking, they may not know about You are this discussing issue. with me. You are not discussing with the people of Zambia. Mm. You are discussing with me. You are asking so me questions. So I'm asking you these questions. I'm Dr. also Fred asking Mende you, on are you telling people? me you don't know who has been appointed mm. by Mr. Kainde to go in the Sadiq group? The person that went to chair that meeting was uh, 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 Dr. Nevas Mumba. Thank you. So my question is, 
which people maybe it could be a different name that I'm bringing uh, across. Okay, let me tell you this. Yeah. So just be blunt. Almost, if you can. almost all the the Troika countries mm. of the Sadiq have congratulated Mr. Munagawa. Mm. Save for one country, Zambia. South Africa has congratulated them. Namibia has congratulated them. Tanzania has congratulated them. Mr. Chisano expressed his views, former president, former president of Mozambique. Mm. There is a group that is there of elders from the Sadiq. I think tomorrow they will be producing their report. I don't see anything that happened in Zimbabwe that justified the approach that was taken by Sadiq. Mm. And within Sadiq also, there are differences within that group. And you, you will know this soon. There is no agreement in the three countries that were there. On this issue, we are isolated. Mm. And we should accept that we are isolated. Did we make a mistake? Mm. If we made a mistake, the best thing in life is to recognize your mistakes and admit them and correct them. Did we make a mistake? I don't think it's a mistake. I think it was a deliberate action. It was deliberate. Mm. We decided to take a side, to take a position. It's very clear. A position was taken by us on that group. Doc, uh, President Fred Membe, when you talk about uh, we taking a side, who are we in this I'm talking about case? the Zambian. Group. Thank you so much. Now, are we talking about Zambia or we are talking about Sadiq? I know that President Agen Dechema is a, a chair of the Sadiq region in charge of uh, security and defense issues. Uh, who appointed Dr. Fred, uh, Nevers Mumba, rather, to go and preside the elections in Zimbabwe. And the Sadiq made its own position and they issued a report using their own leader of the observation, uh, observation uh, mission in the name of uh, Dr. Fred, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Nevers Mumba. So are you criticizing Zambia or President Agenda Shilema and Dr. Mumba instead of uh, Sadiq? Uh, I'm being very polite. Mm. I've just decided to be very polite. Did you participate in choosing Mr. Mumba to go there? Directly. Did I participate? No. Who chose Mr. Mumba? What were the criteria of choosing Mr. Mumba? I thought uh, President Agenda Ishidema represents all of us. So when uh, he makes a decision, uh, that decision represents That's why I everybody. was telling you I chose to be very polite. But if you were on one breath, you want to say these are decisions of Mr. Akainde. In another, you want to say they are collective. It's us. Mm. What I'm telling you is uh, we are not part of that, sir. We are not part of that decision. It has been made in our name, but it's embarrassing to us. And because you are saying it has been made in our name, mm. I think we deserve the right to speak for ourselves. Because it's an action that has been taken in our name. And because it has been taken in our name, we deserve the right to comment on it. And I can tell you, we are not happy. We feel embarrassed. We feel humiliated as a country. We shouldn't have taken the direction we took. Can it be remedied? Yes, it can be remedied. Mm. Instead of escalated, of being escalated, we can turn down. When you are caught flat-footed, there is no need to posture. Humble yourself. Humility is needed sometimes. Mr. Chamisa has lost the election. 
those who wanted him to win should accept that he has lost. Yes, defeat can be bitter, but only when you swallow it. They are choking with envy. They were so sure that what happened in Zambia will be repeated in Zimbabwe. They took the same mechanism they used here. The Zimbabweans were ready for it. They are seasoned fighters. They were ready. They tried to do this here. They knew. We took a side in Kenya. Our government was supporting Raira, who is also supported by the Open the Openheimers, their foundation, the Brentwood Foundation, which supports the Chamisa, which supports the DA, which supports Bobby Wine, and which supports the current government. And which has got a presence at the state as state house today through Mr. Greg Mills. They lost. Their friend lost. You win some, you lose some. They won in Zambia. Fine. They have lost in Kenya. They have lost in Zimbabwe. They will lose next year in South Africa. The DA will lose. Hmm. Do they have the right to support their friends? Yes. But it's dangerous when you start using regional institutions to support your friends. It's dangerous. You can do it, but you are risking. Let's begin to itemize these issues. I mean, uh, the concerns that have uh, been brought forward by Nelson Chamisa of uh, Zimbabwe, of course, he brought in the issue of... Uh, uh, he tells us that uh, there were a lot of uh, you know, mistakes in terms of... Uh, the delimitation process. It brings in the aspect of uh, the fraud in the regist registration process. Uh, the, also, the fraud in the nomination procedure. He also brought in another grouping, which they, they are calling uh, the FAS grouping. Uh, these are, they are calling themselves as friends, associ associates of the uh, ZANU PF. You know, the, according to him and his team, I said these are people that were, you know, stationing themselves near the polling stations. If you go and vote, they will, will call you. We know whom you are going to vote for. Make sure you go and vote for uh, ZANU-PF. If you don't do that, then you'll be in trouble. These are the allegations that have come through from Nelson Chamisa. What have you gathered yourself? I don't know those things. So I can't comment on things I don't know. Mm. You seem to know better. So I, I'd, yeah, I, 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 see, I know better because that's what, these are the exactly words from Mr. Chamisa which has brought in and not only Mr. Chamisa I think, I think I've seen a number of people that have been interviewed by different media houses where they're saying the first grouping was quite you know, lethal uh, on their side Has Mr. Chamisa taken these matters to court? He hasn't yet oh, Let's wait and see mm. when he takes them to court if he does He's actually calling for an election because according to him, he believes that the elections which they held or the process which they held was not an election, but was a cohesion. People are being coerced to vote for the ZANPF. That's him. Do they have courts in Zimbabwe? I think they do. Do they have laws that allow for election petitions? Yes, they do. Mm. When there are such malpractices, they are taken to court, isn't it? Mm. Is Mr. Chamisa petitioning on those grounds? What comment do you want me to pass on those? From things? what has come out from um, uh, Nelson Chamisa is that uh, he's uh, banking on the, you know, the institutions like SADC, uh, the uh, EU, to ensure that. Uh, they SADC and the EU can nullify an election. Sure. That's according to him. That's the last press No, no, no. I'm had. asking you. They have Sadiq, noticed Sadiq, they have no, they have Sadiq, no powers whatsoever. From the last time I checked, SADC or EU have got no powers to nullify the elections. Who nullifies but, an election? But in Zimbabwe? it's the court. The, uh, the, so, the court. so he will strongly believe that there will be another election, failure to which is going to form his own government. Uh, let him do so. Let him do so. 
and see if it will be possible. Let him form his own government. We saw people who didn't accept the 2016 election results here. His friends here did not, were not happy with the 2016 elections. Mr. Kainde was not happy with the election results of 2016. He didn't recognize Mr. Lungu. Did he form his own government here? Let his friend Chamisa form his own government there. And see if you succeed. I wish him good luck. Hmm. What, what does it mean when we see some, you know, uh, presidents in the, you know, across the, uh, the continent of Africa? You've mentioned uh, about uh, Tanzania, which has already congratulated, uh, you know, Emerson uh, Mnangagwa. Uh, we've also seen Tanzania as well taking a position, as well as uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, although not really uh, official. I haven't come across that information, but is SG has actually come out very, uh, you know, uh, categorically. We are saying we are happy because Nelson Chamisa is a, he calls him a puppet of the West. What happens in the case of Zambia if we, or with all these delays, or should we again, should, should we be in a hurry to congratulate, you know, Mnangagwa uh, when the matter is being disputed, at the same time, again, we're chair. What, what can the Zambian government do about the results in Zimbabwe? Is the Zambian government a court? A Zimbabwean court? To nullify elections in Zimbabwe? Can Zambia nullify elections in DRC? Can Zambia nullify elections in Angola? In Namibia? in Botswana, in South Africa, in Mozambique, in Malawi? Can they nullify? Can South Africa nullify Zambian elections? If their friends, the support in Zambia don't win? If I'm supported by DRC in the 2026 elections and I lose, can the DRC nullify Zambian elections? If I start shouting that Mr. Kainde and his party, they have rigged the elections in 2026, can Malawi nullify Zambian elections? If they can, let's see. Hmm. Based on the position that we hold as a country uh, through President Agendich and Mawiza, uh, Chairperson and us, the Sadiq region, should we be in a hurry to congratulate or to issue a statement in favor of Mnangagwa when people are complaining? I'm just, I mean, asking myself, uh, morally, maybe it is what President Agendeshe is trying to consider and he's trying to be careful. Say, so look, I can't be in a hurry to congratulate uh, this person because EU issued a report which is pointing to the contrary. And also my uh, own, you know, region as well is not in support. So maybe he might want to be the last person. Is it not okay, morally? Didn't Raira Odinga protest the results? Didn't he go to court? Wasn't he the Zambian government supporting Raira? Did they manage to nullify the results in, in, in Kenya? Who adjudicated only the results in Kenya? Wasn't it the Supreme Court of Kenya? Does it matter whether Zambia, Mr. Kainde congratulates President Mnagago or not? Does it matter? Does it matter whether he does it next year in August or he does it now? Does it affect Zimbabwe? If he doesn't receive a congratulation or a recognition from Mr. Kainde, he will not be president of Zimbabwe. We congratulated him and ZANPF for a perfect victory. 
they won. And it's irreversible. Those who are not happy with that result will just choke with envy. It's done. Congratulations to President Mnagagwa mm. and to ZAN PF. And how do you foresee Zambia's relationship with uh, Zimbabwe um, going forward uh, after these elections? What changes? Mm. Is the border going to change? Is Zimbabwe going to shift to another place? Can you shift to Zambia? Mm. Be, they, are, I, I they, mean, are, they are our neighbors. I mean based on the statements which came out in the name of uh, uh, President Akendeshima through Dr. Nevas Mumba in the Sadiq region. Because Dr. Mumba has been very magnanimous and says their position is on firm uh, ground. We can't support an illegality. And of course, we have seen some re rebuttaling coming from the ZANU PF, you know, senior leaders look, who have castigated look, the President Akin Dechilema and also Dr. Mumba. Don't put uh, a higher level of self importance than you are. <clears throat> Zimbabwe has resisted for, 20 year, for more than 20 years. sanctions, devastating sanctions. They have tried to have a regime change in Zimbabwe. They have failed. Those who just want their people in Zimbabwe to win have lost again. They are not Zimbabweans. There was, there was a dispute by Donald Trump in America. Didn't the Zambian government congratulate Biden? Did they delay to congratulate Biden? Despite Mr. Trump protesting, claiming the election was a fraud. Hmm? What's the difference? What's the difference? Because those are white people. Zanu PF is black, is a black, is black people. Mr. Chamisa is supported by white people in Europe and America mm. and in South Africa. When he coughs with the white support, then all of us should do shake. Those who are puppets of white regimes, those who are puppets of imperialism, who fail to congratulate President Munagagwa. Those who are not puppets, who are not controlled by anybody, have congratulated Munagagwa. And those are the congratulations in that matter. Does it matter if Mr. Mr. Akainde doesn't congratulate Mr. Munagagwa? Does it really matter? Who is Mr. Akainde as far as the politics of Zimbabwe are concerned? Was he there in the international liberation struggle? Was he there in the second Chimurenga? Does he even understand the affairs of Chimurenga? Does he even understand the history of Zimbabwe? Does he know how many people died to liberate that country? From his friends. Mm. Comrades, let's not overvalue ourselves. Let's not overvalue ourselves. We have to go, Doc. Um, lastly, maybe under a minute, let me just get your opinion and also your comment regarding the coup that has taken place in Gabon. What does it mean? There are seven countries now in Africa mm. under military rule. Mm. There are about five of them in West Africa. In a very short time, we have Burkina Faso, we have Mali, we have Niger. We have Guinea, now we have Gabon. Mm. Mm. 
The most important thing is to try and understand why are these coups happening. And almost all of them in West Africa are from former French colonies. And the soldiers who have taken over are soldiers who are trained by the Americans. And also, these are countries which have been subjected to very heavy exploitation. Niger has got the biggest American drone base. Niger supplies 70% of France's uranium. Out of every three bulbs or lights, in France, one of them is lit by Niger uranium. But over 80% of the people of Niger do not have lights, do not have electricity. Niger produces 5% of the world's uranium, and 70% goes to France. They were not threatening attacking Mali. They were not threatening attacking Guinea. They were not threatening attacking Burkina Faso. Hmm. But when it happened with the Niger, they were threatening attacking it. Niger has got 1,500 French troops. All that I can say is let's pay attention to what is happening in West Africa. Paying attention to what is happening in Africa, in West Africa is not meaning supporting coups. Mm. And even and the coups, lessons and, yes, to go. And what also, lessons are there? And Quickly. also, look, there have been good coups and there have been bad coups. Right. There have been good elected governments mm. and there have been bad elected governments. Right. There is a need to get to the facts of each, of each situation. There are problems that those young people are trying to address, right. are trying to respond to. We'll get to those uh, problems, I'm sure, as we uh, come back for another episode. Otherwise, allow me to appreciate you, uh, Comrade Dr. Fred Mende, for coming through to KBN TV. We will see you again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we end the program this evening. You've been uh, watching uh, State of the Nation with me, Innocent Peer. You can simply call me IP. And my guest of the program has been Dr. Fred Membe, leader of uh, the Socialist Party. Thank you so much for watching. See you next week. May God bless Zambia. May God bless Mother Africa. Good night.